Hey everyone, welcome back to Simming History, where we look at the history of architecture through the lens of the Sims. Today on Simming History, we're going to look at the Italianate, a type of vernacular architecture very popular in the United States Midwest, made iconic in San Francisco, but originated in Britain. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video where we have a special announcement on upcoming subject matters. With the Italianate house, it's really the exterior details that make the difference here. So let's start with the shape. It would have been either a rectangular plan or L shape. Occasionally there would have been bay windows. The house itself would have only been about two or three stories tall. And it would have occasionally featured a square tower, sometimes at the entrance or in the very center of the building. And although this was a common feature, it was not a required feature for the house to be considered an Italianate. Actually, the most defining feature of the Italianate is the roof. The roof would have been low pitched and hipped, typically. It was by far and away the most common roof on an Italianate house. And it's because it allowed for very deep eaves. So the eave would have extended possibly several feet past the surface of the wall. This deep eave allowed for a detailed cornice. So cornice brackets, either in singles or pairs, with a deep trim board with panels set in between. The front doors would have had a large single pane of glazing, and the door itself would have been similar in shape and decoration as the windows. So if the windows were arched, the door may have been arched. If the windows had a pediment surround with decoration, the doors would have had a pediment surround and decoration. And the doors could be either single or double doors. Italianate windows were sash windows. They could be open to allow fresh air into the home. Each sash would have had one or two glass panes, so it would have had a vertical mullion right in the center. And when the whole window was closed, it would look like it would have only have had four glass panes. Italianate was also the first time that arched windows became common. On the top of the arch window, there would have been a U-shaped crown in wood or sometimes more frequently stone with brackets as a method of detailing it. However, decorated pediments and surrounds were also common. And it's what I'm showing here in Sims because unfortunately they don't really have the right decorated arched windows. Porches were almost always present on Italianate homes, and almost always single story. On the L-shaped houses, it would have made up that space created by the L-shape. And on square or rectangular homes, there would have been a square rectangular porch just right in the center where the door was. The posts on porches were typically square with beveled corners and would frequently have had brackets and fairly detailed handrails. After all, Italianates were entirely about the exterior details. Because Italianate houses were really about the exterior details, there really is no set interior style. It could have been Rococo, Renaissance, or Gothic Revival, or even Victorian. It really just kind of depended on the tastes of 
whatever family was building the home. Since there really isn't anything more to talk about when it comes to Italianate interiors, let's talk about the history of the Italianate. It began in England in about 1840 as part of the picturesque movement, which was a response to the formal classicism of the previous era. It emphasized informality and was based off of the Italian farmhouse, which really didn't follow any rules it was kind of just randomness in its beauty. It didn't have any classical orders. They were just, well, picturesque. Eventually, the Italianate made its way to the United States. And it was popular in the, starting about the 1840s, and it went until about 1880-1885. And it was especially popular in the Midwest because it could be easily scaled to match any budget. They were made frequently of either masonry or wood siding, depending on your budget. The wealthy, of course, made with brick and stone, and, well, the rest of us made with wood. The style was also featured in several American design books. It was a thing of the era for professionals to write books to us normal people telling us how we should design our houses, both inside and out. Outside of the Midwest, you could find pockets of Italianates on both coasts, but it's probably most famously seen in San Francisco, where it's seen in the form of townhomes, the, the painted ladies, if you will. If you've seen the TV show Full House, you've seen an Italianate townhome. San Francisco's townhomes are pretty much all either Italianate or Victorian. Now, of course, Victorian, that's not saying much. There are several sub-styles sub under Victorian, which we will get to someday on here. Italianates were not like some of their other Victorian brethren, and that their colors were more mu neutral, more muted. Light browns, light yellows, whites, greens, maybe some grays, maybe a couple accent colors, but these were not extremely colorful buildings. Italianates have received some modern paint jobs uh, by their current owners that are far more exuberant than what they would have been historically. Now, the house I'm building at the moment is based off of the Cunard House. The Cunard House was built in 1869 in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it actually serves as the Lincoln, or rather, the Nebraska State Memorial, as it's the oldest remaining structure in the original area of Lincoln, Nebraska. And it is very very literally based off this house. I found the elevations, I found the floor plans, and tried to base it as much as I could off of an actual Italianate home. Thanks for joining me today as we discuss the Italianate house, which of course means it's time for the announcement on the subject matter. I've been looking at doing, maybe in the coming year, 2021, uh, a couple mini-series on different periods in architectural history. But, you know, sometimes things change and you have to go with the flow. About a week or so ago, Sims announced they're coming out with a new expansion pack, which is centered around the world of Japan. And suddenly, a period in architecture that I wondered if I'd ever be able to build for this channel is suddenly very possible and in everyone's minds. So, I'm throwing out the schedule. And I know I said we were doing every other week, but starting next week, we're doing a mini-series of weekly episodes about the traditional architecture of Japan and its history. And then, once that mini-series is over, we'll go back to our every-other-week schedule. We're going to wrap the year up with a holiday-themed build, which I'm very much looking forward to. 
and I'm very much looking forward to the series on Japanese architecture. I'm actually quite excited about it. This is one I've always wanted to do, but I didn't know if I'd ever be able to without having to resort to custom content. So this is, for me anyway, very exciting. I hope you're excited. I hope to see you next week. Uh, it'll be great. So until then, you can find a version of this build that's playable on my Sims 4 gallery at Simming History. And you can also find me on Instagram at Simming History, where I post teasers for upcoming videos. When I remember to, I'll admit. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions. Until next week, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Bye!